No one knows about that day or hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be in the coming of the Son of Man. Or in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, up to the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what was going to happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in the field, one will be taken and the other one will be left. Two women will be grinding with, with a hand mill, one will be taken and the other one will be left. Therefore, people keep watch because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known what time of the night the thief was going to come, he would have kept watch and would not have left his house be broken into. So you almost be, so you also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Oh God, we come before you this morning. The blessed name of Jesus. Name above all names. Thank you for this time together, this time of teaching. Open our eyes and our ears. Help us to understand the scriptures that you give to us day by day. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray these things. Amen. And so, the title of the sermon this morning is simply this. Where are you? And I need to tell you, as a young boy, this was my vision of heaven. A room with my own phonograph, my own record player. And for you younger people that don't understand what a record player is, that would be like having your own YouTube channel with all the different genres of music that you like on it. Having this record player was what my inventory thought, my hope for heaven. But for me as a boy, there was a really a big hurdle to overcome you got to get past those curly gates. Was I good enough to be judged worthy that the Lord would open the gate for me? Surely God will play a video of my short life and my sins will be exposed. No way would God let me into heaven was my thinking back then. Not only had I stolen a balloon one Saturday night at the grocery store, but as well... I often didn't mind my parents. I didn't do what they wanted me to do. I had broken the Eighth Commandment, Thou shalt not steal. Not only that one, I dishonored my parents. And I had broken the Fifth Commandment. Honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. I didn't even know about big people's sins back then. And back then, these two, number eight and number five, had me really worried. And I thought, boy, I'm in trouble. God pushes that play button on that video. To summarize, as a boy, I hoped to get into heaven. But now as a man, I wait for the blessed hope. The glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ the Lord. As a boy, I feared my sins would overcome my hope in the Lord. As a man, my hope is in the Lord. As you sang, will sing later on the hymn written by Charles Wesley. He wrote these words, now I pray them at this very moment. Come, thou long-expected Jesus, born to set thy people free. From our fears and sins release us. Let us find our rest in thee. Amen. What beautiful words of encouragement. What beautiful words of hope in this time of waiting during this Advent season. Words to live by as we patiently wait daily for the Lord's second return for His homecoming back here to earth. 
Hear the word of the Lord. So also you must be ready, because the Son of Man will come in an hour when you do not expect Him. Around the world, about the time when Jesus was born, there was this feeling of hopeful expectation. God had been quiet for 400 years, ever since Malachi wrote in chapter 4 this promise of God. See, I will send you the prophet Elijah before that dead, dreadful day of the Lord comes. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. Now God's silence is about to break. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. So said the angel to the shepherds on a quiet, starry night. History took a right turn in that night. Hopelessness of the world turned to hope for the world, lying in a manger in a lowly cattle stall. And so it is today. There is this feeling, for surely the evidence mounts, that Christ the Lord will soon return. He stands at the door even now, waiting for the Father to tell him to bring his children home. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Amen and amen. Those two great verses give us hopeful expectation of things to come. But we must be ever vigilant, ever ready, always prepared because of what Jesus said in Matthew 24, 36. No one knows about the day or the hour, not even the angels in heaven nor the Son but only the Father. Yet, realizing that the Father God knows the day and the hour, and He's the only one that knows, still we ask, when will this come to be? God gives us the answer, again in Matthew 24, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. Up to the day Noah entered the ark, and they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. This, it will, this is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. So let's ask the question, how was it in the days of Noah? Let's reach back. Look back into the book of Genesis and read just how it was. And we read these in Genesis chapter 6. And you tell me if we are not living today in the days of Noah just before the flood. Hear the word of the Lord. The Lord saw how great man's wickedness on the earth had become. And that every inclination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil all the time. And then a few verses later, in Genesis chapter 6, we read, Now the earth was corrupt, corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. Talks to me like we might be living in the days just before Noah entered into the ark. Corruption, evil, Violence, debauchery, sins we never even heard of or imagined 50 years ago are all around us. Yet people live as if these things are routine and part of everyday life. They continue to eat and drink, marrying and giving in marriage. And you say as you sit in the pew, well, this sure is very depressing. And I say, no, no it is not. We are living in biblical times. Oh, not as in the times of Jesus' birth, 
but in an exciting and hopeful time of His soon return. Sure, we look around the world and we see that it is falling more and more into sin and as it falls closer and closer to the fiery abyss. But we take courage for the Lord is our banner. We put hope in the Lord knowing what He said in Matthew 24, verse 6. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. And as we stand firm in the Lord, we don't participate in the wickedness on every side. We, as Christians, do not fear the terror of the night or the arrow that flies by day. We know the hopeful signs of times. Jesus said this as he was giving us this morning in Matthew 24, beginning in verse 32. Now learn the lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know summer is near. Even so, when you see all these things, you know that it is near, right at the door. People, be hopeful. Know that the day of Jesus' return is soon upon us. Our day of liberation is just ahead. It could even be this afternoon. See the wickedness all about and know that our blessed hope, our great God and Savior, will soon be at the door. He will soon be here. Get ready, oh, you Christian. No need to pack any bag, for when Christ returns, you'll be leaving all your earthly stuff behind. Just make sure that you're not the one left behind. You know, I recently watched a movie, and the underlying theme was, don't save the best for last. That, my friends, is what exactly God does for us. The Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, is a gift, not a reward. The Holy Spirit enters in. God gives us the Holy Spirit at the beginning, not the end. Only with the Holy Spirit with us at the beginning can we stand through these times. Can we stand until the end? Earlier, we looked at the days of Noah, the extreme wickedness that permeated the hearts of men. Sin ran rampant in the world. How did seeing and know, knowing this make God feel? Genesis 6.6 6 tells us. It says that the Lord was grieved that He had made man on earth and His heart was filled with pain. Imagine that. God's own heart filled with pain. God knew that to fix man, he would have to, to destroy man. And so he sent the flood. You know, the same thing happened with Adam and Eve. Sin found them, and needless to say, God's heart was broken. But though the world is generating a feeling of hopelessness then and now, God continues to bring us a blessing of hope. Just like Adam, who once, as the Bible says, walked with God in the cool of the day. But suddenly, because of the shame of his sin, he hides from God. And so too, we hide from God. Lost in sin, now without God, Adam was without hope. And so are we. Like being tied to a chair on the Titanic, we are a people without hope. There is no hope for rescue. At least, that's what the devil wants us all to believe. That's what he wants us to think. We are without hope. Without hope, despair keeps us grounded in the miry pit, tied to that chair on the sinking ship. All is lost. Sometimes, our hopelessness causes us to not even be sure, let alone care about the future. Live for today. Eat, drink, and be merry. Lost in sin and not even caring. But through it all, though God's 
heart be broken. God cares. And though we might, because of sin, hide from God, like Adam and Eve, He cares enough, loves enough, to come looking for Adam, looking for each one of you. Here's His call to Adam in the garden. His call to you today. Where are you? Yes, if you are lost, today the Lord offers up hope, caring hope, loving hope. Do you not hear His gentle voice, His searching voice as He gently calls out to you? Where are you? If you are lost and not saved, God has found you this day. Hope and salvation has come to your house, to your heart this very morning. Hopelessness is chased away with the hope and the light of Jesus Christ who comes looking for you. Where are you? Answer not my voice but the sweet refrain of Jesus' name calling out to you in the darkness. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Indeed, we live in the most historic of all biblical times, the hope of Jesus Christ soon return. And we, while we wait for that blessed assurance, the psalmist in chapter 31 tells us to be strong and take heart, all you who hope in the Lord. Yes, our hope is in the Lord. And we'll be singing these words from the old hymn that teaches this promise to us. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Now you might be wondering why I'm preaching about the return of Christ at the rapture. It is to keep your eyes looking forward to the rapture of the church. To make us realize that there is more than just the beginning at the manger. I think we more fully experience the beauty of the Bethlehem story, the greatest story ever told, when we see the horror of the shadow of the cross creep across the cattle stall floor. Then to look forward with hope bubbling over to the return of Christ as we meet Him in the air, whether we be dead or alive when He returns. With gentleness, with the voice of a lion, I preach out the word of the Lord. It is the Bible, not I. For I, like John the Baptist, am only the messenger bringing words of hope to a world of sin. To you who know not God as your Savior. Oh, lest you think the Lord tarries or He hasn't returned after 2,000 years, so He probably is not going to come back. Hear this from 2 Peter. The, little, the Lord is not slow in keeping His promise, as some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Oh, the hope of the world was born in Bethlehem in a manger stall. The hope of the world hung on the cross to redeem us from our sin. The hope of the world will one day come again, walking on clouds of glory. Jesus is our salvation. Jesus is our hope. Can you not hear His gentle voice calling Calling out to you in hope and in love. Where are you? Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. 